free your mind. Picture your brain as your Gmail inbox. And it's pretty busy in there. Now imagine you go through and check the little box and mark it as red. That is your brain on meditation. And that's the topic of this video. Now I could sit around here and give you guys advice all day, but you probably won't utilize it. So instead I'm just gonna tell you an anecdotal experience. If you're anything like me, you probably have at least heard of meditation. Maybe you downloaded Headspace and did it three times and then deleted it. Or maybe you've never even tried it. That's great. My meditation journey began informally, I would say two years ago, but I haven't consistently been doing it up until the past been like three months. I've been meditating 20 minutes a day, twice a day for 101 days, approximately. I basically live in a completely new world. If you practice anything consistently, you will eventually get decent at it. I mean, I don't necessarily have the experience uh, to be considered a guru. However, I do consider myself a guru. But that's besides the point. What really switched for me with meditation was this book, and subsequently this book, which I highly recommend if you're at all into meditation. Uh, this, that second book, Transcendence, is more scientific for all of you fucking nerds out there. The science behind meditation is actually fucking crazy. They've done studies where they take kids, at-risk kids, in schools, have them meditate for five minutes a day every day, and the entire school feels the effects. There's less violence in the school, Kids study longer, they can pay attention longer, less class interruptions. They've also done brain coherence studies on meditation. Basically, the higher up you are in a hierarchical uh, system, say like, like a corporate structure, for example, the higher your brain coherence. And they found that in long-term meditators, their brain coherence is higher as well. Therefore, Meditation equals Adderall. But what really flipped the switch for me because I was like, nah, meditation, nah, eh. Do I really need to do it? What really flipped the switch for me was a form of mantra-based meditation, which basically means that you r repeat a, it can actually be any word like Om, you know, that's a pretty well-known one. You repeat that syllable in your head for 20 minutes twice a day and then in three months you reevaluate feel the effects for me it didn't it did not take three months i'm like addicted to it now because it feels so fucking good like it actually feels so good when i come out of meditation i'm literally like Because before I started doing this mantra-based form, I was, like, confused as to what to do. You know, you're like, oh, do I focus on my breath? Uh, do I try to shout out all my thoughts? All you have to do is repeat this syllable over and 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 over. And you will become enlightened. Such as I. Now, I wouldn't say that I'm enlightened. In fact, one of the main catalysts behind me coming back to YouTube was meditation, I think, because it finally cleared my mind enough to where I could actually look at it logically and be like, oh, I could actually just give a lot of value here, you know? But the main benefit that I've felt is focus. I'll meditate for 20 minutes and do school for four hours straight. And then I'll meditate again and then do something else. I shit you not, it's better than Adderall. My focus is better. And you don't get the shitty side effects of Adderall, like, I don't know, fucking, like, the jitters, you get, like, hot flashes sometimes, can't sleep, overall irritability. <clears throat> and the focus is honestly greater for me. But another thing that I want to touch on, which I learned from this book, is the idea of samskara. 
which basically just equates to past trauma, you've got some shit stored in you, okay? Imagine your life force energy as a river. Okay, now, each time you have a negative experience and you become attached to that negative experience, it's like dropping a boulder in the middle of your river. Now, what does that do to the water flow? That's right. It stifles it. Now, if you build up enough of these boulders inside of your river, you're gonna be depressed, apathetic, a fucking loser. But guess what? It doesn't have to be like that. And meditation is a great catalyst for dealing with these things because when they come up during meditation, as they inherently do, or just in real life, you're in a relaxed enough state to distance yourself from the energy and actually like let it go through you. And you're probably like, ah, shit, energy. It's so abstract and complicated. No, it's not. I shit you not, I'll be driving and something will come up. Like I'll see, for example, a car I don't like. I don't know why I don't like it. Maybe it's my ex-girlfriend's car, blah, blah, blah. This is the example that uh, Michael A. Singer gives in uh, Untethered Soul. And I'll feel the energy come up, right? I'm like, oh shit, I don't like that car. Mm, my ex-girlfriend. And then since I've done this work in meditation, I remember to just relax. And I shit you not, you go into a fucking trip ecstasy state where the energy is just allowed to actually leave you and it's extremely cathartic i like sometimes ball my fucking eyes out it feels actually amazing i obviously didn't do a great job at explaining that but if you want to uh investigate further read the untethered soul it's a real life changer at least it was for me i want you guys to ask yourself this has jack ever done me wrong No. Will my life become exponentially better if I decide to sit down and meditate for 20 minutes a day every day? Yes. Do all successful people meditate? Or something like meditation, like walking or you know, working out? Yes. Is there an immense body of scientific evidence behind this? Yes. Now, I'm not saying you should do this, you should do that. In the wise words of the growlers, there's nothing as depressing as good advice. But from my experience, it created a complete 180 in my psyche, okay? Imagine you're driving down the freeway and you just fucking... That's what happened in my psyche. And if you ask a few of my friends, like, they all agree that just adding this one habit shifts their entire lifestyle. Because if you're like me, I get stressed, I get run down. In fact, after I posted my last video, I got strep throat that day and then a sinus infection. I'm still kind of sick. I'm not saying it's a cure-all, but it helps tremendously with mitigating stress. And you know, stress is the number one killer. Look at Warren Buffett. He eats McDonald's every day. He's not stressed. I'll tell you that. He is not stressed. He's gonna live a long life. Well, in conclusion, if you're at all interested in this stuff, read those books. Get it on Audible. That's what I do. I just listen to audiobooks. It's so much fucking easier than reading. And give meditation a good shot. Give it a good, solid shot. Because if you're just gonna fucking meditate once and then be like, whoa. I got bored. You're not gonna see the benefit. Give it a week, okay? Do one week where you meditate twice a day, once in the morning, once at night. Don't set a fucking timer because when that shit goes off, it is very abrupt. You don't necessarily want an alarm yelling at you as you come out of your peaceful trance, okay? So don't set an alarm, just like feel it, estimate it. I don't, I like just estimate it. Do like 15 to 25 minutes, whatever the fuck you want, at least 15 in the morning, and at night, every day for a week. Come back to me and tell me you're not fucking enlightened, okay? If you can't do that, I'm gonna be live streaming my meditations every Monday. Meditation Monday. So join me on Monday for a live stream meditation if you want. If you don't, that's great. I'll just leave you guys with this. Meditation will give you swag. Everyone wants swag.